Hey everyone. So one of the most common analyses that we see our customers do uh, is a churn analysis uh, for uh, perhaps obvious reasons, but you know, you are, when you're running a business, whether it's a you know, B2C or B2B, um, you obviously want to know which customers are at high risk of churning, especially if you're in B2B. Uh, probably important to be able to go after those customers and focus on them and prioritize them if you need to. Uh, obviously, we'd love to go. We'd love, first of all, for none of our customers to churn. Um, and we'd love to be able to focus on our, all our customers, but at a certain scale, that becomes very difficult. So it's important to prioritize. But also, it can be really important to do a churn analysis uh, to try to understand maybe like where to focus your marketing efforts or your sales efforts in the future if you're seeing you know, like high churn in a certain industry or a certain tier. Um, now, when it comes to predicting churn, uh, the reason I'm doing this video is there's, I just want to talk about sort of like the two broad ways that you can uh, approach the churn prediction uh, and the way that you know, I would just, I would generally recommend. So uh, the two big ways are you can either do a uh, supervised um, learning, you can use a supervised learning model, um, or you can use uh, what's called survival analysis. And the, uh, so the supervised uh, approach is uh, relatively straightforward, quote unquote. You effectively go through your customer list and you say, you sort of tag each customer as churned or not churned. And then you use something like a um, uh, logistic regression or random forest to uh, predict whether or not uh, not churned customer or customers that aren't labeled as churned or not churned will churn. Um, the other approach uh, with survival analysis is not supervised. and uh, the reason I generally recommend a survival analysis approach is uh, really twofold. The first is that when you're doing supervised learning, uh, you're, uh, it's binary. It's either a customer is going to churn or not churn. Now, again, we'd love for all of our customers to never churn, uh, but the reality is if you kind of like look far out enough in the future, uh, there's a fairly high likelihood that all customers will churn. So. Uh, of course, there are ways to mitigate this with supervised learning. It's not uh, quite as simple as I'm uh, making out to be right to second. Uh, you can sort of like look back at a certain time range and so on and so forth. But as a rule of thumb, the question really should be more of like, what is the probability of a customer churning within a certain time frame more than is a customer going to churn yes or no? The other challenge with churn analysis is that uh, if you look in uh, in the past, you won't always know whether a customer that is not churned is really uh, a customer that you want to include in the not churned customer list when you're training the, the model. Uh, so let's say, for example, you have a customer that is currently not churned that has a renewal date of next month, uh, but they're going to churn. You probably don't want to include them. And unfortunately, with churn, it's kind of one of those things where you don't know what you don't know yet, uh, but you still want to use some of the data. So if a customer has been around for long enough, that should still factor into your model. Um, and that's where we get into uh, censored data for survival analysis. So here I just have a very simple example. Uh, it's just using some dummy data that I generated. Um, and we have, uh, let's imagine here that we're uh, super dope, uh, B2B SaaS company, and we have our list of customers here. We have the sign up date. We have whether they churned or not, um, the renewal date. And of course, if they've churned, then the renewal date would be in the past. Uh, for non churned customers, the renewal date is the future renewal date. Uh, we might also have some information like the customer tier, the segment, the industry, um, yeah, perhaps you know the average mo monthly spend or future engagement, some metric. Um, again, you may not have a number called feature engagement, but you may have different features. Um, so you can put all that into your data here. And then uh, you can use a survival uh, model uh, that looks something like this. So in this case, there are different models that exist. Uh, in this case, um, we're using the Cox probability, probability hazard model uh, using the Cox pH uh, fitter here. Uh, and uh, it's rather straightforward and simple. In this case, it's literally just this here. And you can see that you can actually customize the formula if you want to be more specific about which um, features you want to include in your model. And then um, we will, in this case, we're going to print a summary, and then we're going to also take a look at the effect of certain variables on the probability of survival of a customer over time. So first, taking a look at um, the... Uh, the summary here, uh, the probably the most important thing to focus on is a coefficient. And uh, we can see here that, so a higher coefficient means a higher probability of uh, churn. 
so in this case, for example, you can see that uh, customers that are uh, in retail have a much higher likelihood of churning than, um, than uh, well, or at least uh, that it has higher, that indicates a higher likelihood of churn, I should say, uh, than other, other features. Um, so now if we kind of want to sort of observe this and see how, uh, you know, customers according to different categories sort of survive over time, uh, and these are, sorry, these are days here, down here. Uh, we're looking at this, for example, by customer tier. Uh, again, this is all randomly generated data, generate data. But in this case, you can see, for example, the customers that are in the basic tier uh, tend to have lower churn over time um, versus, say, enterprise or premium. Um, but you can also, uh, I built a toggle here, so you can quickly like toggle between uh, different variables if you want. So say you want to look at it by industry. Uh, same thing, you can see whether or not certain industries have a higher likelihood of churning faster than others. Uh, great, so we, we have a model that was all very simple using just a few lines of code here. Now, uh, the question is, what do you do with this with your future customers? Uh, so again, keep in mind that with a survival analysis, the question that it really answers is, what is the probability of a customer churning by a certain date? Um, so when it comes to uh, using that, you have to sort of decide how far out you want to look. So of course, you could go and apply this to each renewal date. So say, what's the probability of a customer churning by the renewal date? Uh, in this case, I kept it fairly simple. I'm just basically saying, uh, I'm asking, uh, or effectively what, I'm doing, what I did here is like I'm looking at the probability of survival in the next three months. Um, and of course, only for customers that are uh, in the future to have a renewal date in the future. Um, and then uh, again, since it's creating a probability, it's uh, generating a number between zero and one. Um, so in this case, I have to kind of define what uh, a high risk customer is. Uh, just for this example, I picked 40%. So does it, is there a greater, a higher, like a higher than 40% likelihood that a customer is going to churn within the next 90 days, basically, uh, and return that list of customers, and that's what we have here. So you could obviously play around with this. Uh, I can sort of say, okay, well, what if we want to say, you know, higher, uh, higher than 30% chance of churning? What if we looked at that? Uh, of course, you're going to have more customers in that list. Um, and of course, you could decide to just sort of generate your list of customers with the probability and, you know, push this back to, say, Salesforce or Google Sheets from here. Um, but yeah, so... That's a very high level view, overview, sorry, of how to do a churn analysis. Again, you can use a uh, supervised learning, uh, has its own sort of quirks and you have to be mindful of. Survival analysis is a great approach. Um, and I will uh, share uh, this content from this smart book uh, in, our in our blog uh, with a link. Thanks for listening.